Welcome to Triple IT Third Summer Institute. The recitation that he mentioned really says exactly or expresses the burden that we are under to perform and to produce something that will be of benefit to us, to you as scholars of Islam and to the Muslim Ummah, to the community here. The verse that he recited, This is a special blessing from Allah Ta'ala. As the Prophet says, It is the scholars who are the inheritors of prophets. So in this verse, Allah Ta'ala says that we have selected people from among our servants to inherit the book, to inherit the scriptures. And the burden there, the responsibility is to elaborate, to interact, to make it functional, of use to humanity, to bring us closer to God. As you know, the mission of Triple IT is try to resolve the crisis of Muslim thought and Muslim thinking. And on top of the list is the issue of understanding the Quran, understanding the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. And in this session of our summer institute, the focus is on this interconnection relationship, which has been quite, I would say, a subject for much debate discussion throughout the senses, <clears throat> from the first days of Islam, shortly after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, it has been subject to much discussion. But today, with the challenges that we have, in our attempt in the Muslim Ummah to revive this Ummah, from a Quranic perspective, the biggest challenge is to redefine that relationship between Quran and Sunnah and our position and how it's going to be functioning in our life, how it's going to guide our life into hopefully a better future for us and for humanity. So it is with this that this uh, summer session takes particular say, importance, particular interest, particular concern for us. And we think that we have selected the right group of people, that's you, to come and have that honest debate among ourselves honest to Allah Ta'ala, honest to our community, honest to humanity, honest to the Quran and Sunnah, to really find out what that relationship should be in today's terms, as you know, because we know how what it meant centuries ago, but what does it mean to us today? With uh, this uh, brief introduction, and again to tell you how excited, how thrilled, or the great honor for us at Triple IT to have you all with us for the coming uh, <coughs> Uh, two weeks, insha'Allah. We would like to start with the inaugural lecture from none other than one of the greatest scholars that we have in the United States here, alhamdulillah, the pride of the Muslim community here, the pride of American scholarship. A person who has dedicated himself to the study of Islam, Islamic studies, and to learning Arabic not just classical Arabic, but actually also made a lot of, put a lot of effort to also communicate in local dialects, whether it is the very interesting uh, Gulf dialect or the more humorous Egyptian <laughs> dialect. <laughs> okay. <Sure. laughs> um, I don't think we have ventured into North Africa one. That's <laughs> just too tough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Hakim Jackson, to some people still known as Sherman Jackson, and he doesn't mind being called either one, right? No problem. Uh, he's a scholar of Islamic studies at uh, Michigan uh, University of Michigan. In the past, he has held several positions as uh, uh, on the Sharia Council of North America. At one time, he was the interim president also. We call upon him often to enrich our thinking and understanding of Sharia and our environment in the United States. And to challenge him on one subject that I hope that's what he's going to talk about, which is what is the impact of culture on our fiqh? In the past, our forefathers, those who established Islamic legacy and so on, somehow managed this question in one of the most brilliant 
methods to say and contributed like different shades, different flavors of Islam to every culture and uh, land that they went to, or from uh, South, Southeast Asia to South Asia to North Africa to... Now the challenge is what to do with American culture and its impact on Islamic thought, Islamic practices, the Muslim community development, and so on. He's the master of this discipline, and really I'm looking forward to listening to him and learning from uh, what he's going to say about this. To most of us, we may not agree with it initially, but I think if you engage him in some discussion, he will gain more supporters to his thought than those who probably continue to oppose his thought. We all know that we have crisis in America, in the Muslim community, in understanding the impact of culture upon us. <clears throat> we all know that, especially for the first generation like myself, we're still struggling to what extent the culture that we brought from back home is going to impact our lives here. So hopefully this is a great beginning for redefining the tripartite relationship of culture, Quran and Sunnah in our life here. I think you all have his uh, brief bio there, and the extended one also is available with me. But suffice it to say that he is uh, the author of several uh, major works, uh, Islamic Law and the State, the Constitutional Jurisprudence of Shihabuddin of Qarafi, and those who have studied Fiqh, you know how, what a prominent scholar uh, Qarafi was, Qarafi or Qarafi, we can say it both ways, I guess, until we decide which one is uh, he called himself with, okay? and. Uh, Abu Hamid Ghazali, first al Tafrika, Bain al Islam al Zandaka, beautiful treatise, and more recently, Islam in America, and so on. I want uh, to say that this uh, whole uh, summer institute would be closely managed and monitored and guided by the great wisdom and scholarship of none other than Ustad Mahmoud Ayyub. He has been really a great inspiration and, and uh, help and guide for us. Uh, ever since the inception of this series of uh, summer institutes. Without further delay, I want to invite Dr. Professor, my dear brother, Dr. Hakim Jackson, to start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <coughs>